So how unusual is this agreement between Cruz and Kasich? The director of the Marquette Law School poll, Charles Franklin, is here with some perspective on all of this for going after the guy who wrote the book on making a deal. These two made a deal. <laughs> they certainly did. It makes it a little hard for Trump to complain against deal makers, right, exactly. I suppose. Um, yeah, it, since the modern primary system came into effect starting in seven, 1972, we've certainly never seen two candidates make such an explicit arrangement with each other to divide remaining states. I think almost always we see a weaker candidate drop out, throw their support behind the stronger candidate. But this idea that they're both going to stay in but try to split the states, that one's new on me. Yeah, quite the tactic. At, at least overtly. They, this might have been under the table yeah. stuff. No, that, there's no question that in the past people have, for example, on Super Tuesdays, some people campaign in one set of states, some in another. There's no overt agreement on that, but, but they focus where they're strongest. That sort of thing is certainly common. But here you're saying uh, Kasich will pull out his ads and ask his super PAC not to advertise in Indiana. Uh, Cruz will let Kasich take over in New, Han uh, New Mexico and, and Oregon. That I really don't remember seeing before. And one side question is whether voters will respond well to it or not. It's basically asking your supporters to vote for another guy. And that's uh, kind of hard to pull off sometimes. Yeah, that was going to be my next question. I know it's <laughs> looking into the future here, but in your crystal ball, do you see this being successful? The real problem that we have here is both candidates are trying to deny Trump the 1,237 delegates he needs for a majority. The problem with what they're doing is it may give each of them more delegates from each of the states, but it's not entirely clear it will prevent Trump from getting at least a minority of the delegates from those states. Now, if it's winner take all, then that's a different story, but most of these uh, are either allocated by congressional district or allocated proportionally, so it's pretty hard to hold Trump down. The real battle here is if he gets over the 1237 for a majority, then most people think it's over on the first ballot. Only if some people defected mm -hmm. would that would he fall short then. So their their goal here is to keep him below the 1237 threshold. It's just not clear how effective that can be given the way delegates are allocated. And he's expected to win all five tomorrow. Trump is. He looks very strong in all the pre-election polls unless something's terribly amiss in one of them. He should get a substantial majority, perhaps the vast majority of delegates. Now, it is important Pennsylvania is a large uncommitted slate. So how they go will stay up in the air. And that'll be still another uncertainty going into the convention is what do the uncommitted delegates do. Yeah, you could not make this up, this race. <laughs> right? No, it would be rejected automatically as a fictional work. <laughs> as a, only in real life, apparently. All right, Charles, thank you so much. Thank you. Good to see you again.